This is Mark Hubs with Eris Gone Bullet Molds. Today we're going to talk about a new book that uh, came out. It's called Making the Skin Cartridge by William Schroeder. And he goes by W.J.L. Schroeder uh, on his Amazon page. I think it's available in both hardback and Kindle version. And the book, it tells you uh, essentially how to make a period skin cartridge. And of course, you ask, what is a skin cartridge? We're familiar with the paper cartridges that were used for, car uh, for revolvers during the Civil War and earlier. The skin cartridge is a more advanced form of that same cartridge. Instead of paper, it uses the intestine of usually sheep at the time, they were mutton, that was mandrelled and dried, filled, uh, a bullet attached, and then waterproofed in some way. And these offered a much thinner, lighter, easier to detonate, uh, and sometimes water resistant cartridge uh, for your revolvers. They were probably more expensive at the time. They're definitely much more involved to produce now, but the, uh, the results are amazing. These are cartridges that Mr. Schroeder uh, sent to me to, to try. I know you can't see it, I'll put an inset uh, photograph in there, but. Uh, it's 17 grains. It's a very rigid cartridge, easy to handle, very robust, and it does have some waterproof capabilities. And we'll take these to the range and, and try them out. Now, I mentioned that these are, are more difficult to make. They are, and uh, it takes more tools to do so. But I think uh, just like paper cartridges over loose powder and ball, it's just another layer in that onion of authenticity that we all enjoy when we start digging down on how these revolvers were used originally. Uh, it may not be for everybody, but uh, if you're historically minded and you like to reproduce uh, intricate original cartridges, uh, this may be a book for you. Now we'll go to the range and we're going to shoot, uh, first of all, a Pieta Model 1861. And this is a brand new out of the box gun. It was the first time I fired it. Uh, it revealed some things to me I didn't know about until uh, I loaded these cartridges when they were gun issues, not cartridge issues and then we'll shoot a uh, 48 year old Euro Arms Remington uh, 36 revolver uh, which I actually got much better results with this old war horse uh, than I did with the Pieta. So let's go to the range and uh, see how they do and then we'll come back and I'll give you my observations about the cartridges and using those and also uh, the book that tells you how to do it. This is a really neat little capping set made by John Crossan. You may know that name. He's John is the fellow who makes the Crossan cartridge formers. Anyway, it's a uh, little round box. Uh, you can see it says Speed Star cappers on the top. Inside, there's a stack of 3D printed individual cappers. And you can see I've already had these preloaded with uh, RWS uh, number 11 caps. Although you do have to preload these, it's a lot easier to get the caps into each one of the flanges on the star than it is trying to put them on the nipples of the revolver. So I can, I can uh, load up all the cappers like this before I get to the range so at least there's that many cylinders full uh, prepared ahead of time to use it. You just take each flange with a loaded cap, press it on the nipple, and pull it off. Very simple, easy to do with uh, fat, greasy fingers or in cold weather. And I uh, have several metallic cappers. Uh, they all work in different, different ways and uh, with different success. But so far, this is the easiest thing I've found to use uh, on any type of revolver. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and clear all these chambers. But this is a brand new Pieta Model 1861 Cold Navy, and I immediately ran into trouble loading these skin cartridges. It didn't take me long to realize it was not the cartridge, uh, it was the revolver. 
they would not fully see inside the chamber. Now the heel of these revolvers offers plenty of room and the skin is very thin so I was really surprised they would not see fully. And then I had trouble with the loading lever. And like all Pietas, the loading lever plunge on this is really made for round ball. It's not concave uh, to accept a pointed bullet like the originals. So it would not help me center the bullet into the chamber. And that's another reason it wanted to go in cockeyed. Even with the improved loading lever on this Model 1861, the creeping style, it was having trouble pressing those bullets in. And then later I measured the chambers on this revolver and found that uh, they range from about 0.366 to 0.368, very tight. After I finally got this thing loaded up, cap, it fired very well. The cartridge just went off instantaneously. Perfect ignition. No trouble at all in that regard. Uh, the skin is so thin that the cap has no difficulty uh, piercing it and setting the round off instantaneously. And for the revolver itself, I had no trouble with uh, cap jams. Accuracy was decent with the cartridges at this range with the brand new revolver. One round, the very first one, I have no idea where it went. The other five are, are generally clustered on the the uh, bottom left quadrant of the of this three and a half inch bull. I think this could be tightened up also with these cartridges or any other load. Well, I hope the Euro Arms Remington would not let me down, and this 48-year-old revolver uh, did not disappoint. It was much easier to load. You can see the cartridges go right in, even with the Remington-style flimsy loading lever pressed into the chamber without any trouble. And it was a breeze to load these things up very quickly. And I also found later that the chambers on this gun are all at point three seven six consistently every chamber is point three seven six and I think that consistency in those more open chambers really facilitated loading uh, these cartridges and any other cartridge for that matter Just like with the Colt, I got perfect ignition with every shot using the Remington. I don't think it could have been any better with loose powder and ball. The thin skin on the cartridges offers no resistance to the percussion cap flame as it passes through the nipple vent. You'll see me giving a little nudge to the cylinder to help it turn uh, between shots. And that's not a cartridge issue, and that's me because I didn't uh, properly oil the cylinder pin before my shooting session. And here you can see the results at 20 yards. One dead center, one right off the paper, and a little cluster of four uh, just the bottom left of the, of the bullseye. And all that is uh, me as far as the flyers. I think the gun has potential. I decided to load up again right on top of any debris or trash left in the chambers from the previous six shots just to see if that would cause any issue and it caused no problems there was nothing left in there that kept the flame from igniting all six of the, of the next cartridges as before they all they went off just fine without any trouble however when I cleaned the revolvers later I did see some small flakes of skin uh, flush out with the hot water in the chambers I don't think uh, the debris was heavy enough that it would cause any ignition problems if you loaded a, you know, a new round on top of a previously fired one.
Uh, Mr. Schroeder tells me that's probably the first time skin cartridges have ever been videoed uh, at the range. Uh, there's very few people making these and obviously they have not been made commercially in 130 plus years. We'll talk about the book first. Uh, it's an instruction book, uh, but it, uh, it does have some filler in the end to give it some length and that's some, some other uh, shooting and casting uh, techniques and tricks that may be of use to you. There's a, there's a funny story uh, that uh, Mr. Schroeder relays from an old timer. Uh, some photographs of the implements that he sh he's used to make these cartridges, some close-ups of them. What it doesn't have that I suggested to him is probably a, a detailed schematic of one of the mandrels that's involved uh, in making these. And obviously the mandrels will vary according to the bullet and the powder charge. But it needs to, I think the book needs a starting place to show you exactly what a baseline mandrel should look like. And also some more emphasis on the fact that you'll need multiple mandrels. Uh, the skin, skin to, that goes on the mandrel to be formed has to essentially dry overnight. It can't just be taken off and laid aside to dry. It has to stay on the mandrel uh, while it's drying. So you actually need multiple mandrels uh, for this uh, particular type of operation. And if you have the, the, the way to make the mandrels, uh, that's not a big deal. But uh, it does take more than one, as we're used to with uh, paper cartridge making. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Mr. Schroeder also said that he may do a, uh, a new edition in the future that includes some of that more, and more of that information. So it's on Amazon. I think there's also a Kindle version, uh, if you prefer Kindle. And uh, we'll go back to the guns now. Uh, the surprise on the... Uh, Pieta was the small size of the chambers, uh, and they were not consistent. Uh, they all vary between 0.366 and 0.368, if I remember correctly. It made it very difficult for uh, the heel of the bullet with the, with the skin attached to be inserted uh, into the chamber. And of course, that would be true with the paper cartridge also. It wouldn't just, just be for skin. Uh, so uh, that was a surprise to me. Uh, other Pietas that I have fired uh, with, with cartridges of other types, have, that hasn't been an issue. Now, of course, all Pietas have an issue with the loading lever, or the plunger on the loading lever. It's just barely rounded on the bottom. It's almost flat, and it's done with, uh, it's a, a manufacturing shortcut, essentially, for round balls. Uh, original plungers had a conical-shaped recess and they not only uh, help to not deform the bullet when loading, they also help to sort of center the bullet into the chamber. So it would be, it would center up and then push in. In this case, the loading press just goes straight down wherever it's at, smashes the nose, and if, the, uh, if it's not properly indexed perfectly, uh, it will still try to push it in and it will make it go in cockwide or shear off one side of the bullet. So. Uh, at first blush, shooting a new Pieta, this is, the, this is irregardless of cartridges, uh, I would suggest that you really need to fix the plunger and you may need to look at what bullet you use uh, for the chamber to make sure, or just be very aware of that when you're loading to make sure it's perfectly centered uh, when you put it down the chamber and press it in. The old Euro arms, a uh, completely different story. The chambers on these were all consistent, they were all .376. Uh, the cartridges went in without any trouble, and also I got actually got a better uh, group with this gun. Now a lot of this has to do with the, the relationship between the the chamber size and the bore size, and I haven't I haven't checked the bore on these to see what they are, and this, of course that's more difficult. But I suspect that I'm getting a good engraving of the rifling as this one goes down the tube. If it's already squeezed down to a .366 uh, six or .367 in the Pieta it's very possible that it's not engraving well uh, in the larger bore as it goes down. Anyway, that's for a different video. So I hope that you enjoyed this. It was informative. Um, check out Mr. Schroeder's book. And uh, if you feel adventurous, uh, you may want to go to that next step in uh, cartridge authenticity and start looking at skin cartridges. Thanks for watching.